Kind of sign, Ellie? Great big thing. Red, white, and blue. Real pretty. It says, Welcome, hero. Welcome, hero. Did you ask him who said to put it up? Yes, sir. They said it was Ms. Drysdale. Ms. Drysdale? Hmm, that is puzzling. We best go talk to him. My dog, is that is a big rascal. Purdy, too, just like you said. Where's the fellas that put it up? Reckon nice guy. <laughs> Hey, where'd that sign come from? Miss Drysdale had it put up. How come? We don't know. She must think that one of us is a hero. Oh, yeah, that's me. You? What'd you ever do for Miss Drysdale? I just saved her valuable French poodle dog, that's all. And for that, she'd give you this big hero sign? That's not a great story about that poodle dog, Granny. How'd you say it, Jethro? Well, I was out back this morning, and I heard this dog go whining. So I looked through the hedge. And there was a sissy-looking fella. He had a hold of Miss Drysdale's poodle, and he was cutting off all its hair. No. Yeah. So I says, hey, you, I says, let go of that dog. Did he let go? No. Oh. So I went through the hedge and asked him again. But he just looked at me and kept on a cut. So I grabbed a hold of him and shook the dog loose. What did he do? He kept yelling, my sewer, my sewer. So I told him to go back to his sewer and leave that dog alone. <laughs> and then he slapped me. He slapped you, did he? Yeah. It didn't hurt me, but it made me awful mad. So I picked him up and chucked him in the swimming pool. <laughs> ah, I bet that pulled him off. It sure did. He scampered out of there and took off like a wet jackrabbit. And once I had him on the run, Miss Drysdale took up the chase. No fooling. Yeah, she kept running after him yelling, Henri, Henri. And he was, too. Henriest little fella you ever did see. <laughs> I'll never be able to get Henri to make another house call, and he's blacklisted me with every poodle beautician in Beverly Hills. Well, now, Margaret, I don't... And look at poor Claude. He had to wear his raincoat so no one can see that he's only half clipped. <laughs> Go to Daddy and let him comfort you. Will you stop calling me that dog's daddy? <laughs> Milton, how heartless. You're a cruel and unnatural father. <laughs> what a ghastly morning I've had. The sign people didn't deliver the welcome hero banner for the front of our house. Oh, don't they... worry about that. Now, I've got a tremendous hero's welcome waiting right here at the bank for our nephew. Lance Bradford is my nephew, not yours. <laughs> well, I can be a father to a dog, but I can't be an uncle to a hero. <laughs> Look what I'm spending on your nephew's reception. Electric sign, 1,500 bucks. Bleachers, 600. Band, 400. Confetti, streamers. Why, the astronauts didn't have a bigger reception. It's no more than Lance deserves. He's the pride of the Air Force. Jet stream Bradford. Okay, okay, but I'm still spending a bundle. And all I ask is one little favor. I want to invite the Krampus. No. Oh, but they're our next door neighbors, our biggest depositors. They are your biggest depositors. Positive. And believe me, that will change when Lance takes over the bank. No, wait. <laughs> I'm making him vice president, but he's not taking over. That's only a question of time, dear. But his brilliance and daring, with his intelligence and personality, he'll be bringing in accounts that will stagger. Excuse me, Mrs. Drysdale. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt, but your driver just telephoned from the airport. The hero's plane has landed, and they'll be on their way here immediately. Oh, how thrilling! Come, Claude, we must be ready to greet your cousin, the hero. Get into your uniform. Oh, Chief, but please, don't make me get into that ridiculous outfit. Ridiculous? It's patriotic. Well, you should feel honored. Of all the people in this bank, I have chosen you to portray Uncle Sam. <laughs> Chief, please, the... Out. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Clavitt. This is Milburn Drysdale. Listen, I don't have time to explain, but please come over to the bank and bring your family. Yes, we're having a big hero's reception. <laughs> Who was it, Jed? It was Mr. Drysdale. And guess what? He's having a big hero's reception for Jethro down at the bank, and he wants us to come right over. See, I told you, hot dog. Sure he's making a big thing out of you saving that dog. Well, come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Where's Uncle Sam? Get out of the way! Get out here in the double! Come out here to the curb! 
Archie, please, please don't make me do this. Oh, no, you look great. Besides, I'm going to give you a bonus. Really? What is it? You get to keep the beard. <laughs> Here they come! Bring up the band! Wave your flags! Cheers for the hero! <laughs> Lance Bradford, Uncle Sam salutes you and thanks you for your valorous service. It is now my honor to turn you over to your new Commander-in-Chief, the President of the Commerce Bank. Mr. President, Uncle Sam, Aunt Margaret, honored guests, my fellow Americans. I join your ranks today, not as a hero, but as a fellow employee of this great bank. No longer Jetstream Bradford, terror of the skies, but just plain Vice President Bradford. <laughs> so in the future, don't look up to me as a hero. Look up to me as the boss's nephew. <laughs> look up to us, Lance. You're still a hero to us. You're a dreamboat. Welcome to the bank. We'll be seeing you, doll. Lovely ladies, the eagle of the wild blue yonder salutes you. Poor little fella, he really wants to say it. Better have a look at him, doctor. Oh, gone. Sure do feel bad about that. After him flying clean from Texas for my hero reception. <laughs> Your hero reception? Oh, didn't you know what it was all about? I rescued Miss Drysdale's dog. What a catastrophe. An unqualified fiasco. Yeah, we thought it was real nice, too. Till our boy fell on his head. Uh, how is he? Is, is he badly hurt? No, he's commencing to come around now. <laughs> I thought I was out of the Air Force. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clampett, uh, could I ask you and your lovely family to leave before my wife recovers consciousness? Oh, is your wife unconscious? Yes, when Lance fell on his head, she fell on her... She fainted. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Oh, sure hope you feel better. I just started to. Who are you? I'm Allie Mae Clampett. What's your name? Just call me Jetstream. Well, pleased to meet you, Mr. Stream. <laughs> I, 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 look at that. The old reflexes are just like lightning again. Well, I think I'll take a look around the bank. Are you sure you're all right? Of course. That's the Air Force training. You crash a plane, you climb right into another one and take off. <laughs> old Jetstream is good as new. Nerves of steel. Eyes like a hawk. <laughs> well, I just closed the door. <laughs> One thing a pilot's got to have, great peripheral vision. <laughs> Tricky door. <laughs> yes? What? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh, bad news, Chief? Good and bad. My wife's still unconscious. Well, what's the good news? That was it. Well, what is the bad news? Well, all the employees were out front. Somebody robbed the bank. <laughs> Come on, you two. We want to get home. Can't you walk a little faster? <laughs> Not and drag this dog, I can't. <laughs> but I told you, Sergeant, we can't give you a description of the robbers. The bank was empty at the time. All my employees were out front cheering and waving pennants and... Of course I have security guards, but they were out in front, too, carrying balloons. <laughs> I know they're supposed to carry guns. No, but... Just a moment, Margaret. I'm talking to the police. Good. I want the Clampets arrested at once. They tried to kidnap our baby. What? It's true. Jethro was dragging poor Claude out of the bank while the rest of the family waited in the getaway truck. I rescued him just in time. <laughs> Call you back, Sergeant. 
Well, then, aren't you going to tell the police about the attempted kidnapping? <laughs> Margaret, stop worrying about the dog. The bank's been robbed. You simply can't put things into perspective, can you? You can't separate the important from the unimportant. <laughs> oh, Lance, I'm so glad you're here. Perhaps you can restore order out of chaos. Somebody better. Did you know your employees were all out in the street and your bank was robbed? Yes, I know that. <laughs> Pretty sloppy way to run a bank. You hear that, Milburn? Lance has been here less than an hour, and already he's put his finger on your trouble. You run a sloppy bank. <laughs> Did you give the police a description of the robbers? No, I can't. I don't have one. <laughs> if you're in the Air Force, you'd be court-martialed. You hear that? If you were in the Air Force, you'd be court-martialed. In fact, I'm pretty disappointed in the entire operation here. You hear that, Milburn? Lance is disappointed in... I heard him! I heard him! <laughs> I don't mind telling you. I'm uptight about this whole setup. I think I'll take the company plane up for a spin and unwind. What company plane? Do you mean to tell me that this bank doesn't have a plane? No. Milton, how embarrassing. <laughs> what does a bank need a plane for? An executive jet could give this institution some class. Oh, it desperately needs class, lad. <laughs> I could probably pick you up a nice little jet for half a million. Half a million? Yeah, you heard what lad said. That's how he unwinds. He takes a plane for a spin. Well, I've got a cheaper idea. You can take a dog for a walk. <laughs> I know it's hard for you earthbound people to understand. Milburn, dear, I hope you've learned something from this meeting with Lance. I think I have. I must hurry home now and meet with the caterers about tonight's party. What party? The homecoming party for our hero. Oh, yes. I'd like to take Lance along if you can spare him. I can spare him. <laughs> See you later. About that executive jet, uh, would you like me to put out a few feelers? Yes, no money, just feelers. <laughs> oh, hi, little fella. How you feel? Fine. Hey, where are you going? Uh, to give Ellie May an invitation to the party. Huh? Oh, what party's that? Well, the one Mrs. Drysdale, I mean, my Aunt Margaret is giving tonight for her hero. Well, how about that? <laughs> she just don't quit, does she? <laughs> hey, there's gonna be lots of people here. Yeah, big crowd. I wonder if she'd like for me to spray my hair or brush my teeth or gargle for her. <laughs> I don't think she'd like it. I'll do it for nothing. Who are you? Oh, I'm the fellow that picked you up when you fell on your head. Well, when did you fall on yours? <laughs> There, Lance. Hi, Ellie May. I came over to invite you to a party tonight. Oh, well, thank you. Is that homemade? Oh, yes, sir. I just got done cutting it up and putting it out to cool. Could I have a piece? Sure, help yourself. I'm just going to take this into Granny and I'll be right back. Say, would you like to take a swim when I get back? I sure would. It'll be a relief to get out of these hero trappings and be a plain civilian. Okay, be back directly. <laughs> Beautiful girl, but she sure makes lousy fudge. systems are go. Well, I'll give you something to fix that. Sit down, sit down. You aviators must lead a real exciting life. We live in fame and go down in flame. You don't say. Lance is what you call an ape. That means he's been in lots of dog fights. Oh, my nephew Jesse has been in a few of them. Really? Yeah, last one he had was a doozy. Tell me, uh, what did he tangle with? A uh, Russian MIG? Oh, it was a uh, French poodle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where did your nephew have this dog fight? Uh, was it in the Asiatic theater? No, 
Well, he's out front of the bank. <laughs> I have a feeling my leg is being pulled. Granny can take care of that, too. <laughs> Gee whiz, Lance. Sure must be hard to fly them fast airplanes. Well, mostly it's a matter of cool courage, perfect judgment, and the ability to react instantly. You see, when you're flying at twice the speed of sound, you've got to have lightning reflexes. I'm sorry, but I ain't... I'll get it. I got it. <laughs> Glare from the water. I ain't got the right medicine. I'll go mix up a prescription and be right back. Well, Granny, maybe these two young ones would like to visit for a spell. Kind of get acquainted. Oh, all right. I'll come over to the dry sales and see you later. I'm one of the few doctors in Beverly Hills that makes house calls. You don't have to bother. I'm fine. A ounce of prevention. Let's go, Granny. Oh, well, Iris, guys, Dale, would you mind taking some pictures of me in front of my hero side? So that's where it is. Yes, ma'am. It's a little bit high, but if you kind of squat down and shoot up, I think you can get it. <laughs> but I count three. Just push this little button right here. You see, I'm going to take these pictures around, get me some television commercials, and make some money. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> You've done it wrong, Miss Drysdale. You're supposed to push it with your finger. <laughs> By doing it with your foot, you done smashed it. <laughs> Take that sign down immediately. It won't do no good now. You done ruined the camera. <laughs> you stupid lout. You boob. You're a thief and a kidnapper. You belong in jail. Excuse me, Miss Drysdale. I hope you won't think I'm touchy, but that ain't exactly no way to talk to your hero. <laughs> hero? You're as much of a hero to me as Attila the Hun. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> Imbecilic fathead. I don't understand you at all. One minute you treat me like a prince, and the next minute you're mean-mouthing me. You keep this up, and I ain't gonna come to your party tonight. If you show up at that party, I'll crown you. There you go again. Now I'm a prince. <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Drysdale. I was just on my way over to your place. Don't you dare set foot on my property, you scrawny little witch. What did you call me? Don't get wrong, Granny. She blows hot and cold. First thing you know, she'll say something nice. <laughs> oh, it ain't a social call. It's professional. I'm just doing my duty as a doctor. Some doctor. You're the world's greatest charlatan. <laughs> See? Now she's being nice. <laughs> ah, that's the use of trying to talk to you people. You're illiterate cretins. Was that good or bad? <laughs> Hard to tell. That could go either way. Well, I ain't got time to play games with her. I gotta go look after that sick aviator, Lance Bradford. Lance Bradford? Don't touch him. He's my nephew. As a doctor, it's my duty to treat him, no matter how bad a family he belongs to. <laughs> I'm warning you, stay away from Lance Bradford. He's my brother's only son. My blood flows in his veins. Well, let go, or it'll flow down your chin. <laughs> Stay away. I don't want you or any member of your family to go near him. It's too late, Miss Drysdale. Him and Ella this close already. What? They out by the swimming pool, in their swimming suits. So that's your game. You don't fool me with this Dr. Charade. You're hoping to lure my nephew with a beautiful face and a seductive figure. Uh, he ain't my type. <laughs> <laughs> ain't flying off is dangerous? Oh, I've had a few close calls. I remember one terrifying experience. We were flying at 20,000 feet, right through a storm. And the plane was rocking and rolling and bobbing and weaving, being tossed around like a kite. Oh, my goodness, it must have been awful. It was. If the stewardess hadn't given me a sedative, I never would have made it. <laughs> Lance! Lance! You must get away from here immediately. What's the matter? These people are trying to snare you with this creature. Don't you see the trap? No, but I dig the bait. <laughs> you stay away from this precious boy, you blonde vixen! Now, just a doggone minute. It's all right for you to mean mouth Jethro and me, but don't you call Ellie names. She's a peasant just like the rest of you. You low-bred hussy! Dad did it, Fatso! <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, 
if I could swim, I would have joined the Navy. <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> see Miss Drysdale, we're going to see her nephew. He's blood kin, Jed. He's got her meanness in him. That is a lot of hogwash. Your own grandfather was one of the orneriest cusses that ever roamed the hills. But did that make you mean? No. <laughs> I wonder what did. <laughs> Jesse and me is ready to go next door and wish Miss Drysdale's nephew good luck. This is his first day as a civilian. Ah, that's a spirit. Ellie knows who he's beholden to the boy. Who's beholden? Who's all beholden? The boy has been in the Air Force fighting. Fighting where? Fighting everywhere. Fighting who? Fighting anybody. I told you her meanness was in him. <laughs> Randy, the boy has been in the service. It's his duty to fight our enemy. Well, then let him start with his aunt. She's the biggest one we got. <laughs> hey! Look what I'm going to give that Air Force lieutenant for good luck. My Buckeye, my Rabbit's Foot, and my Dried Frog. Fifty cents a week allowance. I can't afford nothing else. Well, it ain't the gift. It's the thought. I'm going to give him my lucky jackknife that I was toting the day I struck oil back in the hill. He a like that, Paul. Well, it's the boy's first day working at Mr. Drydale's bank. We all want to wish him well. well I'm going to give him a kiss, and Bessie's going to give him this here banana. <laughs> change and go with you. That's a spirit, Granny. I want you to know that you've made me feel mean and small and selfish. And I don't think I'll ever forgive you for it. Reuben, <laughs> <laughs> darling, I have a surprise for you. Uh -huh. This morning, I'm going to prepare and serve breakfast myself. Hey. You haven't done that since we were first married. I'm thrilled. The thrill is mine. To sit across the breakfast table from a handsome, dynamic, young banker. Well, handsome, dynamic, yes, but I wouldn't exactly say young. Oh, Milburn, darling. Lance is barely 30. What are you talking about? My nephew, of course. Now that he's vice president of your bank, you can look forward to some real success. Margaret, for your information, my bank is already one of the most successful in Beverly Hills. Isn't that marvelous? And he's only been here one day. <laughs> Phenomenal. Could I have some coffee? What a red-letter day for your bank, getting Lance Bradford, the Air Force hero. Well, it's not exactly a rotten break for him either. After all, I'm making him vice president. Yes. Well, as long as promotion can be swift. <laughs> Margaret, he's been in the Air Force for ten years, and he's a second lieutenant. That's what I mean, dear. Right to the top. <laughs> can I have some coffee? <laughs> Milburn, I hear Lance coming on your feet. Quick. What? Rise! Stand at attention. <laughs> a salute, dear. <laughs> Ellie's. <laughs> May I please have some coffee? What's with the robe and pajamas? I just got out of bed. You just got out of bed, yeah? Do you sleep in that cap? Why, is it wrinkled? <laughs> you are due at the bank at 9 o'clock. 
That's oh nine hundred hours. That's oh nine hundred hours. I thought you were going to fix breakfast. Oh, yes. Right away. Aunt Margaret, these lovely, delicate hands weren't meant for kitchen work. <gasps> Milburn, why can't you be gallant and chivalrous like Lance? Now, can I have some coffee? <laughs> of course, dear. You are such a good influence on Milburn. <laughs> Aren't you going to get dressed and go to the office? Don't rush me. It's a difficult transition from USAF to Combank. From what to what? Military parlance. USAF is United States Air Force. Combank is Commerce Bank. I'm VIP Combank. You're sick Combank. <laughs> well, look who's here. Good morning. Morning. We come to wish Lance good luck. Bessie's got a present for you, Lance. Thank you. I love bananas. <laughs> I got something for you, too, Lance. W what's that? Oh, that's a buckeye, a, a rabbit's foot, and a dried frog. <laughs> uh, you eat it. I'm having eggs. <laughs> oh, they ain't to eat. They's for good luck. Oh. And this year's for good luck, too. How about a little good luck on this side? <laughs> and for my part, Lance, I want you to have my lucky jackknife. I was toting it the day I struck oil. Beautiful. Beautiful gesture from a beautiful man. <laughs> when you got problems, trouble is weighing you down, ain't nothing will do you more good than setting whittling on a piece of pine. And I fetched you one of them, too. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. I got two presents for you, Lance. Well, that's nice of you, Granny. Dr. Granny. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> my first present is a jar of my homemade pickled owl gizzards. <laughs> and my second present is free medical treatment. Thanks. They go together nicely. <laughs> well, we'll uh, mosey along now and let you all have your breakfast. Well, it certainly has been wonderful. What are these horrible creatures doing in my breakfast room? What did you call us? Oh, no, Granny, she was referring to Lance and me. Uh, come on, horrible creature. Let's eat in the kitchen where we belong. You know very well to whom I was referring. This little witch and her brood. Oh, no, no, Ma. You see, Jed, I told you she'd mean mouth me. She don't like me. Oh, Granny. That is an understatement. You've always been a thorn in my side. I can change that. To a fist in your mouth. Now, uh, simmer down, Granny. Let's go, everybody. Oh, please, Jess. Let me throw an uppercut to one of her chins. <laughs> Get out of my house. I gotta let her have one good one. Now, Granny, we come here in a spirit of peace and friendship to wish good luck to Lance here. And we's leaving with a hymn of happiness. I got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I got a joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart, you stay. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Well, I have instructions to remove your name from the door. I, I thought you knew about Whoever it. Whoever issued those instructions is through. It was your wife. She's through. <laughs> your wife is through? That's right. She's through with these instructions. Has she issued any others? Yes, she wants her nephew's name on this door. I assigned him an office down the hall. Well, it seems she wants him to be close to you. Oh, well, that's understandable. He's new, he's learning the business, but we can't share the same office. I don't think she expects you to. She instructed me to put your name on this door. That is the washroom. <laughs> this time my wife is going too far. I agree to give a hero nephew a job, but this is ridiculous. By the way, where is the fearless falcon of the skies? 
I told him to stop and pick up some civilian clothes. I don't want him running around the office in his Air Force uniform. Yes, Miss Thompson. Sorry to intrude, but Mr. Lance Bradford is on his way up. And before he gets there, I wonder if I might ask a bit of a favor. What is it? Might I be a secretary? He's such a dashing chap, even in his civvies. Miss Thompson, Mr. Bradford's secretary will be chosen on merit. You will have an equal chance with the other girls. That's right. Now back to your desk. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello, Ansel. Tally ho. <laughs> How about that? She recognized me, even as an ordinary civilian. <laughs> Some civilian. You look like Baron von Richthofen. <laughs> Thanks. Will my new convertible be all right parked down there in front? I won't be here long. Look, Ace, I hate to mention business, but your job is getting new accounts with this bank. I opened two new accounts on my way here. Really? Yes, I charged this outfit and the new convertible to the bank. <laughs> Charge accounts I don't need. Your Aunt Margaret brings in plenty of those. And speaking of her, she said you had uh, connections in high places. You might bring in some of that Pentagon loot. Don't get uptight, Skipper. As we say in the Air Force, any landing you walk away from is a good one. What does that have to do with anything? You're really earthbound, aren't you? Miss Hathaway, I'm ready to start interviewing secretaries. Yes, Mr. Bradford. Just call me Vipcom Bank. <laughs> Vice President, Commerce Bank. Mr. Commander in Chief, I'm Vip. He's sick. <laughs> I'm getting sicker by the minute. Now look, fly boy, you and I have to have a serious talk. Check with me about 1,400 hours. I'll try and squeeze you in. Lance, why isn't your name on the door? Typical civilian inefficiency. If he were in the Air Force, he'd be on the carpet. You hear that, Mildred? If you were in the Air Force, you'd be on the carpet. Yeah, I may join. Lance, your new convertible is simply beautiful. Could you take me for a drive? I'd love to, Aunt Margaret, but I've got to interview some secretaries. Slave driver. What? Can't you let up on the boy, even for a few moments? Must it be work, work, work all day? Well, I'll try to go easier on him. How do you do, Mrs. Drysdale? Miss Hathaway? The uh, secretaries are here to be interviewed. Have them come in. Girls! The duty calls, Aunt Margaret. <laughs> you poor, overworked darling. Do try to lighten his burden, Milburn. Have a little pity on the boy. My heart goes out to him. <laughs> You'll weather the storm, Lance, dear. You're from good stock. Thank you, Artie. You will pick a girl with proper breeding. Naturally. <laughs> Come along, tyrant. Where are we going? I want to discuss a raise and better working conditions for Lance. <laughs> Where are you going, Granny? Uh, what'd you say, Jed? Where are you going? Huh? What? There. There's a varmint in the neighborhood. What kind of varmint? Mean, Jed, mean. Ugly, too. Vicious thing. Sound like a coyote. She looks like one, too. She? Uh, it's a female. You aim to shoot her in a good dress? I don't care what she's wearing. <laughs> oh, so that's it. You're after Miss Drysdale. Oh, eight years of name calling. I can't take it no longer. Sit down. Oh, please, Jed. Just let me give her one barrel. No. Nope. Oh, I'll give her a 50-foot running start. Nope. A hundred foot. And you can hold my glasses. Well, now, hold your glasses is a real good idea. Hand me that gun, Jed. I can still salt her britches. Nope. I can't miss a target that big. Now, you go in the house and stay there till you cool off. Oh, Jed. And ask the good Lord to forgive you for your mean thoughts. Ask him to fill your heart full of love and kindness. Ask him to make you a good neighbor. I wish he'd make me a good neighbor to take the place of the one I got now. <laughs> you do as I tell you. Hi, Uncle Jed. Hey, give me a hand with this big mirror, will you? What do you aim to do with it? 
I aim to take a good look at myself, as quick as I put on my uniform. What uniform is that? Air Force. Oh, you joined the Air Force, did you? I'm fixing to. I seen the way them girls down at the bank made over that Lieutenant Lance Bradford. Yeah, somebody uniform catches a lady's eye. Wait till they see this rascal. Mm, doggy, that is a fancy one. I reckon so. It's a uniform of a four-star general. <laughs> oh, he's starting out as a general, are you? Why not? Didn't cost no more than a lieutenant's uniform, and a general gets a heap more pay. <laughs> That's where the old sixth grade education really pays off. <laughs> Granny? Jed, can I have my glasses and my shotgun back? You could have had your glasses if you hadn't asked for the shotgun. <laughs> what you mean? I'm afraid you still got in for Miss Drysdale. Well, I asked the Lord to fill my heart with love for the woman, like you said. Did he do it? Jed, is it my fault that he don't like her neither? <laughs> You just keep asking him to fill you with the sweet spirit of charity and kindness. Oh, Jed, please, can I have my glasses back? Not yet. <laughs> I'll get to that woman if I have to crawl every foot of the way. Hi, Granny. How do I look? You look fine. Where are you? Hey, I'm right here. Hey, where's your glasses? I don't need glasses. <laughs> How do you like my uniform? I'm a four-star general now. General? Yeah, and my pay sure is going to beat that 50 cents a week allowance Uncle Jed gives me. <laughs> Good. This uniform is a real girl grabber. Got a lot of fruit salad on my chest. You always was a messy eater. <laughs> Girls at the bank see me now. <laughs> Say, that looks like an Air Force general. Wait here. Jethro. Oh, hi, Lance. What are you doing in this outfit? Ain't it a pity? Air Force general having to drive around in no wreck like this? <laughs> you know what you can get for wearing a general's uniform? No, not exactly. But I bet it's plenty. <laughs> Listen, buddy, they could send you to the stockade. I don't care where they send me, just so long as there's plenty of girls. <laughs> well, that's your problem. Mine's getting new accounts. Listen, I understand your Uncle Jed is worth $90 million. That's right. Do you suppose you could get him to put it in Mr. Drysdale's bank? That's where he keeps it now. Oh, boy, just my luck. I've got to get someone to open a new account, or that old goat will eat me out. I don't keep my money in Mr. Drysdale's bank. You don't? Would you be willing to? You fix me up with some of them pretty girls, and I put in my whole allowance. You mean it? All of it? Every penny. Come with me, Jethro. A general. Introduce me as a big, important general. Don't worry, I'll give you a real build-up. <laughs> girls, I've got a terrific thrill for you. I'd like you to meet the biggest general in the Air Force. The ace of aces, the pride of the Pentagon, General Buzz Bodine himself. Oh, <laughs> And girls, he's single. Oh! Where is he? I can't find him anyplace. You mean Lieutenant Bradford? I mean Lieutenant Goof Off. Where is he? He left in his convertible with Helen, Janet, and Susan. What? Well, he said it was a consolation for not getting the job as his secretary. <laughs> television and a portable bar. The boss ordered it. I want it out of here, and I want him out of here, and I want his name off that door. Miss Hathaway! <laughs> yes, she is. Come out of there. We're no longer sharing the washroom. <laughs> My goodness. I, I was beginning to get claustrophobia. Where's Lance? That's a good question. I have some flowers for his desk. Well, put them in there. His desk has running water. <laughs> well, you're out. Not anymore. It now belongs to that phony flyboy nephew of yours. What do you mean, phony? You told me that jerk had high connections, that he'd bring in some Pentagon money. And I have. 
Did you say you have? That's right. I've just come from a meeting with a four-star Air Force general, and he's agreed to put his entire allowance into the bank. Holy mackerel. Those Air Force procurement allowances can run into billions. He's not kidding, is he, girls? No, he's not. We met him. He's the real thing, Doctor. Four-star general. They call him the pride of the Pentagon. Ace of aces. He's got decorations all over his chest. And he's putting his allowance in my bank? Every penny of it. Oh. Miss Hathaway, open the bar. Champagne for everyone. We're going to drink a toast to our hero, Lance Bradford. Oh, <laughs> oh Margaret, I love you. Mm, forgive me for doubting your nephew. He's a marvelous boy. <laughs> ah. Oh, there's someone in my office. Oh, I'll get it. You girls stay with our hero. Dance, drink, be merry. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's, he's a jolly, jolly good fellow. Good fellow. <laughs> General, this is a great... <laughs> General. That's right. General Buzz Bodine. Pride of the Pentagon. I told Lance to put my entire allowance in your bank. And here she is, the whole 50 cents. <laughs> seen a year that I doctored the little darling? I'm sure it does fly. She's probably toddling around by now. I'd love to see her. Me too, and all the other folks at Petticoat Junction. Same here. Why don't we just haul off and go? Oh, oh Ladies, ladies, please. I know I'm an exciting thing to see, but get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Uncle Jed, ain't this uniform something? Drives women wild, even my own kids. <laughs> they was cheering something else. That's the truth. I am something else. <laughs> Will you be quiet, loud mouth? Uh oh, you done sassed a four-star general. I might just throw down on you at a court martial. He ain't gonna throw. A now, now, stop your squabbling. <laughs> I'm gonna get packed and ready to go. The rest of you do the same, quick as you can. What's he talking about? Go where? To Hodeville. To see the folks at Petticoat Junction. That's what we was cheering about. Yeah. We wasn't cheering you, General Lunkhead. <laughs> watch it, civilian. That's your second offense. One more and you're in real big trouble. Jethro, why don't you go change so we can leave? Change? I paid a whole week's rent on his uniform. I still got six days to go. <laughs> well, ain't you supposed to join the Air Force and then get a uniform? Uh-uh, no. They might start me out as a colonel or something. General gets a heap more pay. Well, I guess you know what you're doing. Well, if he does, it'll be the first time. <laughs> Number three. Now you're going to find out what happens when you insult General Buzz Bodine. Buzz me? Buzzard. What else? <laughs> that turret. Now hear this. Your leaves is canceled, your liberties is withdrawn, and quick as you fix my breakfast, you're gonna march 20 miles with a full pack. Says who? Says the United States Air Force. The Air Force backs me up, and the Air Force gives me authority. Well, then let the Air Force give you breakfast. <laughs> hey! You take this skillet and get busy. Now that is a direct order. Bro, if I was you, I wouldn't... <laughs> what do you say now, General? 
Uh, <laughs> Reckon that'll teach you a lesson. You done ruined a good skillet. <laughs> Folks, to drive us to the airport? Our pleasure, our pleasure. To drive there, you wouldn't have to leave your bank. Oh, that's all right, as long as you don't leave my bank. What? <laughs> <laughs> you don't plan to stay in Hooterville long, do you? Oh, no, just a visit. Granny, LMA, come on, our ride's here. Oh, Mr. Clement, uh, don't pick up those bags. You could hurt your back. Miss Hathaway? <laughs> Chuck's he ain't heavy. Where's Jethro? Oh, he went out to the Air Force Base for breakfast and didn't come back. Yeah, they probably never tried to feed a four-stomach general before. You mean to say Jethro wore that general's uniform? That and a lump on his head. <laughs> Granny, they may just keep him out there at that Air Force Base. Not the way he is. <laughs> come on, Jed, let's get going. Are, aren't you concerned about Jethro? Oh, he knows how to get to Hooterville. You look at that? Yeah, I heard it. My golly, Howard, that's one of those military helicopters. It is? Yeah. And there's a general getting out. And he's heading this way. You reckon we're being invaded? Well, I don't think so. You don't usually find a general leading an invasion. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Roger, we're going out. <laughs> hey, look at those ribbons. And four stars. That's an important man. At ease, civilian. Here, have a cigar. Well, thank you, General. Thank you. You're welcome. Air Force, give me a whole pocket full of them. Give me the sunglasses, too. Real nice bunch of fellas. Went out to this Air Force base for breakfast. Happened to mention I'd like to go to Hooterville. <laughs> man, you should have seen them fellas jumping around. Snapping salutes like they was brushing flies. Offered me my own plane. I'd have took it, except for one thing. What's that? Don't know how to fly. <laughs> you don't know how to fly? Not yet, but I'm fixing to learn. they such a nice bunch of fellas, I'm thinking on joining up. You're thinking of joining? That's right. Uh, where'd you get that uniform? At a costume company in Hollywood. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ain't you Jethro Bodine? I used to be. Now I'm Buzz Bodine. Right at the Pentagon. <laughs> Yes, well, you know what you can get for wearing a general's uniform? Well, not exactly, but I'll bet it's plenty. <laughs> oh, here comes my train. I'm going to the Shady Rest Hotel and get that there fellow Steve Elliott. Give me flying lessons. Well, Jethro, I wouldn't wear that uniform. I don't blame you. Wouldn't come close to fitting you. <laughs> Steve? Steve, a general... Hughes Airport? Yeah, it was Uncle Joe's idea. He thought Mr. Hughes would be so flattered he'd lower the rent. Did he? Well, when it was used past year, I was paying $18 a month. Now that it's used airport, he's raised it to 25 <laughs> Good old Uncle Joe. What'd you start to say about a general? Oh, yes. There's an Air Force general at the Shady Rest. You're kidding. He has four stars. Is that a general? Boy, is that a general. <laughs> this is a chance for you to make some extra money. Oh. Well, he wants you to give him flying lessons. A four-star Air Force general? And he wants me to give him flying lessons? That's what he said. Isn't it thrilling? It's crazy. That's what it is. Why? Honey, I was in the Air Force for five years. I didn't even see a four-star general. Well, you'll be nice to him, won't you? <laughs> nice to him? I'll shine his shoes, draw his bath, and serve him breakfast in bed. <laughs> but why would a four-star general come to an out-of-the-way place like this? I told you, he wants you to give him flying lessons. Uh, honey, somebody's joking. Do generals joke a lot? No, I've heard that they don't. <laughs> oh, well, you can ask him yourself. Here he comes. That really is a four-star Air Force general. <laughs> now, don't forget to be nice. <laughs> don't worry. How do I look? Terrible. Thanks. Uh, General, sir, this is a this is a great honor. I, I believe you met my wife. Uh, Betty. Yes, sir, Betty. And uh, I'm I'm her husband. Uh, 
Steve. Yes, sir. That's right. Betty, Steve. Uh, that is uh, Steve and Betty. Uh, we're the Elliots. I haven't seen my husband this nervous since we had a baby. Yes, sir, that's true. We did have a baby. Oh, not while we were in the Air Force. That is to say, I, I was in the Air Force. I'm my wife. You see, she's a girl, so she... <laughs> Sir, my wife tells me that you want me to give you flying lessons. I realize, of course, that the general's joking. Nope. You want me to give you flying lessons? Yep. <laughs> See, Steve, I told you. He don't catch on to things too quick, does he? <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's get on up there and wild blue yonder. <laughs> Where have I heard that voice before? He said he was called the pride of the Pentagon. Maybe it was there. Uh, somehow that voice doesn't have the ring of the Pentagon. <laughs> Hey, where's the starter? It's beginning to come to me. Me too. <laughs> hey, how do you start this rascal? The engine's inoperative. Well, let's fly over there and get it. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> Jethro, what do you think you're doing? Learning to fly so I can join the Air Force. Do you know what you could get for wearing a general's uniform? Everybody asks me that. Must be a bundle. <laughs> what you could get is the federal pin. No thanks, no pin. Uncle Jed don't want me fooling with nothing sharp. <laughs> Jethro, let me explain it to you. Lots of luck. <laughs> the jitney right, Andy. I'll get the bag. Please go and take the train out to the Shade Rest Hotel. Give our best to your family. Bye, Andy. Andy don't see much, did he? No, but when he does, it sure ain't worth listening to. <laughs> How's that, Mr. Drucker? Well, Ellie May and Granny. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Hi, Sam. Oh, well, Mr. Clampett. Ah, uh, Jed. Uh, Jed. Uh, Jed, Granny, Ellie Mae, I'd like you to meet my friend Howard Hughes. Oh, hi, Mr. Hughes. Howdy, young lady. Proud to meet you. Pleasure's all mine, ma'am. Any friend of Sam's is a friend of ours. Well, thank you. Oh, Mr. Drucker, you got a new cat. Yeah, I call her Marmalade. Howdy there, Marmalade. You sure are pretty. Jed Clampett's fella I was telling you about, Howard, struck oil on his land back in the hills. I wish it had happened to me. Howard's biggest landowner in these parts. Do you tell. What have you got on your land? Well, last year, I had a flood. <laughs> and the year before that, a drought. <laughs> Don't let him fool you. He does all right. He raises barley, corn, rye. Can make good stuff out of them. Granny. I mean stuff like bread. Sure you do. <laughs> you ever happen to come by my place, drop in. I'll give you three fingers of bread. <laughs> what did he mean, Jen? <laughs> train to the Shady Rest. Hey, Jethro's already out there. Jethro's in Hooterville? Yeah, come in a few hours ago. Was wearing an Air Force General's uniform. Said he was going out there and get Steve Elliott to give him flying lessons. I'll go out and flag down the cannonball. Sam, I think I'll go out to the Shady Rest with the Clampets. I want to talk to Steve about rent on Hughes Airport. Okay, Howard, we can finish our game later. Baby. Cutest I ever did see. Can I hold her, Big Joe? Well, sure you can, Ellie. And now be careful, Ellie. That's not one of your critters. Hello, Granny. Yeah. Look at that. Ellie and that young and take to each other real natural. Oh, Jed, wouldn't it be nice if Ellie had a baby of her own? Yeah, but uh, first it'd be nice if she had a husband of her own. <laughs> Come on, Jethro, you look just fine. 
Uncle Joe ain't exactly a snappy dresser. Believe me, it's safer than wearing a general's uniform. Boy, what a come down. From Pride of the Pentagon to a Hooterville hit. <laughs> hey, you're still going to give me flying lessons, though, aren't you, Steve? Oh, I'd like to, Death Row, if I had a safe plane, but well, that old crate of mine is falling apart. Would you like a new airplane? <laughs> Would my wife like a mink coat? Well, go ask her. <laughs> Forget it. Well, that's okay. My Uncle Jet's got $90 million. Hey, Uncle Jet, can I see you for a minute? You're right there. And I'll have some money of my own, too, now that I'm a retired general. <laughs> well, ain't I entitled to a pension? <laughs> I wouldn't put in for it if I were you. <laughs> Steve, that's a mighty fine little baby. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Clampett. Hey, Uncle Jet, would you buy Steve a new airplane? You need one? Well, yes, sir, but I don't expect you to. I mean, that is, we'd pay you back, naturally. We? Well, Uncle Joe and I are sort of in business together, what he calls Carson Elliott Enterprises. We have this crop dusting service. Say, Steve, I'd like to talk to you about the rent on Hughes Airport. Could you talk to Uncle Joe? Yeah, if I could find him, but uh, he always hides comes first of the month. <laughs> See, we keep our plane in Mr. Yu's pasture. Airport. <laughs> yeah. You hurting for rent, Steve? Oh, I'm hurting for everything, Mr. Clampett. My plane's in pieces, and we work out of this broken-down shack. And... Airport terminal. <laughs> yeah. I got an idea. Why don't we all go over to the pasture? Uh, airport. <laughs> and look things over. Fine. Hey, I'll go along. Y'all can use the expert advice of a retired Air Force general. <laughs> Where are you going? We're going over to see Steve's crop does an airplane. He does crops with an airplane? Yeah, you see, Granny, you, you fly real low over a field, and you... Steve, I'll explain to her. She don't understand aeronautics like I do. <laughs> you see, Granny, airplane's got a fan out front called a propeller. It spins around and makes a big wind. Understand? <laughs> well, anyway. Steve flies low over the fields, and the wind blows the dust off the crops. That's what you call crop dust. <laughs> Beautiful, General. <laughs> Mr. Clappett, if you like the idea of buying out Uncle Joe, I'm sure he'll be amenable. Well, I don't want to get him riled. <laughs> what I mean is I think he'd like it. And we could call the new company Clappett Elliott Enterprises. Wait a minute. I want in on that. After all, this here is my pasture. Uh, airport. <laughs> fine with me. Me too. Sam Drucker says that everything is here man touches turns to gold. Well, I guess it's just a question of making the financial arrangements. Well, why don't I call my banker, Mr. Drysdale, and have him to handle it? Dearest Bones, Drucker store. I'll go flag the train. Good. <laughs> Where's Jethro? Oh, looks like he's checking out my plane. I'll get it. <laughs> Jethro? Yeah? <laughs> this is impossible. There's no opening between those two cockpits. There is now. <laughs> well, listen, we're going over to Drucker's store to call Mr. Drysdale. Get out. I wish I could, but I'm stuck. <laughs> Jethro, when the Air Force lost you, they lost a great general. Thanks. <laughs> Will you please help me get out of here? <laughs> Mr. Clavett, you and Mr. Hughes, go ahead and catch the train. This may take a while. Yes, operator, uh, I understand. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, I'm sorry, Chief. There's no telephone at the Shady Rest Hotel in Hooterville. Oh, fine. We've lost touch with our largest depositor. Ninety million dollars can go down the drain like that. Ninety million is safe. It's here in your bank. All Jed Clappett has to do is write one check, and this bank becomes a parking lot. <laughs> Hello? Yes, ju just a moment. It's Hooterville calling. Don't accept it. It's disaster. It's bad news. What's that, Mr. Clappett? You're buying Carson Elliott Enterprises. I told you! There it is! <laughs> Doom! <laughs> We're a parking lot. He's blown ninety million. Did I understand you correctly, Mr. Clappett? You're going into business with a man named Howard Hughes? Hang up! I don't want to... <laughs> Howard Hughes? Give me that phone. Uh, Mr. Clavett, it's me, your friendly banker. Oh, hi, Mr. Drysdale. Yes, sir, that's his name, Howard Hughes. I met him down here in Hooterville. He's the biggest landowner in these parts. I, I thought most of his land was in Vegas. 
Well, it might be, but uh, part of it is in corn and barley. And then, of course, there's a Hughes Airport. Mr. Clampett, could you describe Mr. Hughes to me? Well, yeah, he's uh, right here. He's, uh, I'd say he's a kind of an ordinary-looking fella. Kind of tall, lanky. Uh, he's got on an old shirt, a pair of work pants, and some old faded sneakers. <laughs> It's him! It's him! Howard Hughes, the billionaire! Wouldn't you know that he and Jed Clavett would get together? Money goes to money. You've heard me say that a hundred times. No, I haven't. You will. <laughs> Mr. Clavett, do you think Mr. Hughes will agree to do business with my bank? Well, hold on, I'll ask him. Howard, you mind doing business with Mr. Drysdale's bank? Jed, if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Howard says, I heard him! I heard him! <laughs> what a beautiful voice! Like an angel. <laughs> Seems kind of ordinary to me. <laughs> but anyway, Howard and me is going in the airline business. Would you handle a financial arrangement? I'll be there on the first plane, and don't let Mr. Hughes out of your sight. Okay. 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 Yeah? Okay. Bye. <laughs> Never hear a man so excited. He says you got a very famous name, Howard. Well, it ought to be famous. I've been selling corn, barley, and rye in this valley for over 30 years. <laughs> hey, come on, Jim. He's too good for me. <laughs> Sit right down there, Mr. Clampett. What do you prefer, reds or blacks? Well, I'll take the ones on this side here. All right. Oh. 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 It's no use, Jethro. I can't get you out of there. Hey, where are you going, Steve? <laughs> to get a saw. <laughs> hey, oh, no! Not that! Take me out of here in one piece! Please, Steve, help! Oh. <laughs>